Hey, welcome back to another Sartboard Review. This time we're going to be having a look at the Starboard Touring Inflatable Board. This is the 12 6 by 31 in the deluxe construction, which for 2018 is a double chamber construction. You have an internal chamber here, which is inflatable. You inflate it here and you have the more traditional based external chamber that you inflate at the back of the board. We're going to give you the full readings of how this came out under a flexion test and what it's like to paddle on the water. Now, without a doubt, Starboard are pushing the boundaries and R&D that they're putting into the inflatable boards this year. Uh, we've already tested the Starboard Airline board, which is where they've got a high tension cable going underneath the board. And this again is a new board for this year for them. It's a double chamber construction. The board still has an internal core of drop stitch and the internal double chamber as well has an internal core of drop stitch. And both the chambers or the whole of the board is finished off in their fusion technology, which is where you don't have glue, which bonds the second layer of PVC on the board making the board lighter and stiffer than a more traditional baseboard and also brings down that glue which is then better for the environment. The board is finished off as well with a 3k carbon band which is the black layer around the rail of the board to give extra stiffness and just looks pretty cool and they also do make this board in a zen construction as well which is the more lightweight stripped back version doesn't come with a double chamber like this one. The specifications for this board is 12.6 long, it's 31 inches wide, 6 inches thick, 321 litres in volume. When we weighed it, it weighed just over 12 kilograms and it retails at £1,175. And it's finished off with a single US box touring fin. Well, you definitely can't say that we didn't use this board because Will did actually paddle this round Menorca on a circumnavigation SUP paddle little mission he wanted to go and do he went off and did a week off and he paddled around it on this board fully laden up with kit front and back and the board did perform really well and remember you can follow will and check out his full paddle of that trip on the geosup app so definitely we have used this board in lots of different conditions. As for paddling this board, because it is 12.6 long, it offers you that nice amount of glide, nice and easy to paddle in a straight line, especially with that nice nine inch touring swept back fin it comes with. But being 31 wide, it still offers you that extra stability and also the great capabilities to load up quite a lot of weight at the front and at the back of the board. Unlike some other touring boards that are sort of the more 29, 30 or 34 wide, when they're getting wider it's a nice sort of width at 31 offers you a good amount of stability but doesn't slow you down that much either so apart from the new double chamber technology that on the deluxe boards other things to note on this board that are really cool is the rail edge runner at the back there releases the water much quicker definitely feels better when you're paddling and it feels like it's got less drag at the tail and it does look to be releasing the water well we've used that rail edge runner on other boards and the airline boards have the same system really nice system and it does actually work it definitely releases the water quicker than having a rounded tail would do other nice thing you've got an fcs sort of star mount you can locate in here you can screw this into the fcs mount at the front there and then that gives you the star mount obviously you can screw lots of different attachments and accessories into that star mount at the front and it's also in a great place to be just in front of your feet very easy to reach and quick to have at hand other things that are well worth mentioning on this board really big and stand up carry handle you can see it easily there on the video nice eva deck pad right to the back of the tail and they've even got a kick pad at the back of the tail which is the red eva section you can see at the back it's nice to have if you aren't using it all the time for touring so then you have got that kick pad again you know i'm a big sort of believer in the kick pad when you're doing step back turns you know where to put your feet a nice thing really like the fact that the board comes with bungees front and back ready to go touring that's what we like it is a touring board so we want to bring it straight out of the box and get on the water and use it to put some miles underneath our feet as for putting this board on the deflection test now remember our deflection test is where we put a board on a gap of 1.5 meters apart and we put 75 kilograms of weight on the center generally directly either side of the handle and then we measure how much the board drops when you put the weight on this board dropped 14 millimeters which is pretty strong there's no doubt about it but it's actually quite interestingly the same drop as the 2017 blend that we tested in the deluxe construction as well that also proves that last year's 2017 deluxe construction was very strong and good in deflection too because this definitely feels stiffer underfoot now i think the reason this is if you look at where the double chamber is the double chamber comes around and ends about 
12 inches a foot behind the handle and goes up towards the front of the board. So when measuring our deflection test, obviously the gap is here and here, and the board isn't really, the, the double chamber isn't really bridging the gap between our deflection tests. So actually the board on the water feels a lot stiffer, a way load stiffer than last year's Deluxe did, but in the deflection test it doesn't come out quite like that so just bear that in mind because double chamber is a little bit further forward because obviously when you're going to be paddling hard and putting your putting your effort in you're going to be pushing the nose and this part of the board down into the water a bit more so that's why they brought it further forward than having it into the middle part of the board so it's a really good move from starboard but it's definitely something you've got to be aware about when you're looking back on our deflection results so that's why i think the deflection isn't as strong as maybe you'd think it would be but when you're paddling the board, it is unbelievable how stable it feels. And actually it feels really stable in the width. It's a very uh, strange, strange thing to explain, but when you're moving the board side to side, it just feels like a hard board. There's no doubt about it. It feels really responsive and quite um, stable underfoot. It's a very strange feeling, but it, it just feels really stable. And that really is to do with that double chamber on the board. As far as using the dumbbell chamber and inflating it, it's very, very easy. In fact, it doesn't take any more time than a normal board with one valve. I've tried inflating the center chamber first and then the outer chamber, and I've tried inflating the outer chamber and then the inner chamber. Doesn't seem to make a difference. The inner smaller chamber takes 10 PSI, so you inflate that in about 15 seconds and the outer chamber obviously goes up to the recommended 15 to 18 psi so on our deflection test we pump this up just to 16 psi just in case you're wondering that so putting all that together when it comes to paddling in choppy waters slight downwind swells going into wind because of the double chamber and the slight nose kick at the nose there it does punch into chop relatively well and rides down waves really well too. Bear in mind this is an ice up, this hasn't going to have the top end performance as a hardboard would do, but for an ice up it's pretty good. In fact it's very good as putting in touring sense, it's a great board to put on weight on and get somewhere into wind, downwind, because that's the real truth about touring. You can plan loads and pick the perfect weather window but it isn't always like that, which Will found in that circumnavigation. He had headwinds, he had tailwinds, he had sidewinds, he had good days and bad days. And that really is what touring is about. And you, whatever board you take, it has got to be able to handle those conditions as best as any board could do. Another thing that's worth talking about and highlighting for you SUP tourers out there, especially if you're getting an ice up, is the safety aspect of SUP touring. You, lots of things can happen when you're touring. You can be far out to sea, maybe you're inland and doing rivers. It's not so much of a worry, but what happens if your board does have a slow puncture or a leak or something happens? You don't know what could happen, it could be something. With the double chamber, you've got the hope of having an internal chamber that doesn't get deflated if you have a puncher. I really think that's a very nice move and personally, if I was paddling a long distance, it's just nice to have as much of that knowledge and comfort, you've got a bit of safety there, as an extra chamber will stay inflated. Yes, if you've got 50 kilos worth of bags on there, it might not float it and you might have to shed your bags but it will float you and keep you on the water and keep you safe. So it's definitely something to think about. And a lot of other brands who are making real touring based boards, it's something that I as a tourer would really like to see on more boards in general. So having a look at the bottom of the board here, you can see the slight bit of nose rocker at the front there, which is great for getting over bumps and chop, especially into wind. Stainless steel D-ring up at the front there. You can see the double chamber in the center area of the board. Looks pretty good and it's pretty smooth and it's finished off really well. So it definitely isn't gonna slow you down at all having that double chamber. Moving towards the back of the board, pretty slim line US box and finished off with a tail edge runner there. Fin wise, it comes with the FCS SUP Touring nine inch fin, a really nice swept back fin, doesn't get caught on seaweed. And it also slips in the box, very easy and locks down in place. A very quick system that's easy to get in and out. Having a quick look at the bag you get with the Starboard Deluxe range, you get the nice top end quality bag 
sort of made out of recycled materials, ripstop nylon, very lightweight, which is nice to be doing when you're traveling and touring. Still got the wheels, got the handles everywhere. This board bag, this physical board bag has been on the airplane. It's been in, pushed around airports. I've been down cliffs with it and it hasn't got any rips or marks at all. And we have loaded it up and used it pretty thoroughly. So it really has been tested to the edge and it's come out on top. So a really nice looking bag and a very practical bag too. The pump it comes with is great for the traveler or tourer because it breaks down relatively small. You can take the foot pegs off the bottom of the pump and you can attach them separately. It's a double chamber pump, so it pumps on the upstroke and the downstroke, and then you can turn it over just to pump on the downstroke. It's not the biggest pump, but then personally, that's a good thing if you're traveling because everything's about space and weight saving. So it does take a little bit longer to inflate than the bigger double chamber pumps, but it does get the air in quick enough and it's nice and lightweight. So it's absolutely fine as a touring package for a big board. So who do we think this board will best suit? Well, paddling weight, 60 to 110 kilos. You could use this racing. You could use this as a first time sup. There's no doubt about it. It's nice and stable, but really it's gonna lend itself well to being loaded up and to being used. It's a great touring board and it is gonna take you places and take a lot of weight and it's ready to go. So pros and cons and value for money. Well, definitely the pros, it's a very good shape and a good width to offer you a lot of stability, but still enough glide to take you places with a lot of equipment. And the double chamber stuff, it's a great move. It's definitely stiffer underfoot and also adds an extra bit of safety. Cons, well, the double chamber does add a bit more weight. So you are gonna be looking at a heavier board, especially compared to the Zen model but that's just something you just have to bear in mind and be aware of. I would personally pick a slightly heavier board that's stronger and stiffer over a lighter board. And value for money, well at 1,175 pounds, it is definitely not the most expensive ice up on the market, but it's definitely not the cheapest either. But this is a big player. The starboard range of boards is a fantastic range and a very well-known brand. You've got to remember that when you buy into a board brand like this, you're buying into a pedigree of boards and a price point for that from them with this construction, I think it's a very good price point with a hell of a lot to give you. Hope you found this board review interesting and informative. I hope you watched it on the SUP border site because you get loads more information that we give you about this board with sliders and graphs and brand videos and stuff like that. And also, if you wanna know more about this board and what boards we directly compare it to, rivals in the industry, and give you hard facts about what we think's best, check out SUP border Pro. And remember to follow me and Will on GeoSUP to keep up to date with what we're testing next. Otherwise, we'll see you next time with a SUP border video. Thanks a lot.